we all know about the kingdom of heaven one way or another. For some of us, we might have entered the kingdom of heaven through the use of psychedelics. For some of us, we might have entered the kingdom of heaven through a really deep, intimate, uh, love-making uh, affair with someone, you know, like really deep and intimate. For some of us, we might have entered the kingdom of heaven through sports, uh, through surfing, through eating, eating a meal, and it's like the most delicious meal you've ever ate. And the kingdom of heaven, to sum it up, it's fulfillment. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. That's what Jesus was referring to when he said, uh, you know, come or that, you know, what was he saying? He says something like, uh, he, thou shalt not enter the kingdom of heaven until you become surrendered like a child or something. But that's the kingdom of heaven he was referring to, fulfillment. So, you know that if you took psychedelics at one point or another and you had a really tremendous trip, how did you feel? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. And in fact, so fulfilled that you might have just hang out in a place for like, you know, a long undetermined amount of time because you were just so fulfilled in the moment that you didn't even want to move. I know my, not my most recent trip, the one before, you know, me and my friend, we just, we, we tripped and we just sat on a rock for like five hours because we were so fulfilled in the moment. You know that feeling when you get intimate with someone and you're in bed and you're making love and you know it's it's you sort of you know go to these higher states of consciousness how does it feel it feels like ah oh, yes it's all all right it's all good right it's all good it's all perfect it's all beautiful it's all wonderful and so the question then becomes you know because we do chase these things right we do get addicted to drugs whatever, name your favorite drug, heroin, cocaine, psychedelics, etc. Uh, we do get addicted to uh, other people who uh, work with us to get to those states of consciousness. So then we might end up chasing someone uh, and chasing somebody from the other sex or chasing friendships, etc. to get to that state. And it's the same thing with uh, chasing rushes, you know, those adrenaline junkies. They're chasing the same thing, right? We're all looking for that, oh, it's all beautiful. It's all all right. That total surrender, like I did skydiving and it was like, as soon as you jumped off the plane, it was total surrender, total bliss, total, ah, oh, it's all good. Now I don't have to think. It's like a total letting go. Now the question then becomes, uh, is there a way in which I can reach that state in which I can reach that fulfillment, that contentment, without having to chase and desire and long. Because, you know, again, if you're going to relate that state with a certain drug or a certain person, you're going to spend all your life chasing something. You're going to go after something. And uh, that's not a very pleasant feeling to feel because you feel lack automatically you come out of the completeness out of the wholeness into lack same thing with food you know people uh you see who are constantly chasing food going from one restaurant to the next trying this and that i mean some people travel just to eat you know no judgment there i'm just saying it's what they're seeking is that feeling when you go and get a new meal and it's like oh wow and you feel like, ah, oh, right, you, you eat and you loosen your belt after or whatever and you feel good momentarily, you know. Uh, and that's person that's chasing food, in all likelihood, they're going to have, you know, bad health and they're going to run into problems later on. Same thing with drugs, same thing with people, you know, you chase people and you're looking for that experience through another person only instead of sharing it with that other person, sharing the greater love, the greater fulfillment. 
uh, you're gonna run into all kinds of troubles doing that, my friends, all kinds of troubles. So the question then, let's go back to the question. Is there a way in which I can be in that fulfilled state, that content state, without chasing anything, without doing anything, wu wei, do without do. How can I be in a fulfilled state, in that, ah, oh, in that cosmic orgasm, just by being? And I think I, uh, I uh, can tell you something that, I can tell you something that is uh, a deep truth here. And the answer is yes, first of all. Uh, and I'm going to share with you here what it is. And I'm going to share with you the methodology exactly. So you get a notebook and a pen. And you wake up. Do this, do this in a fresh day, okay? Do this in a fresh day. Start the new, it's a new beginning. Because every moment is a new moment. Every, every moment is a new moment. Start this in a new day, okay? If, it, if you're watching this in the evening, plan it out so that tomorrow morning you do this. You get a notebook, you get a pen, and then you write down the title, Things I Am Grateful For. And you just sit there with it. Now, when you get up, I mean, do your thing, drink water, go, you know, take a shit, do whatever needs to be done, get, let your body wake up, and then sit down and do this. Don't do this right away. You need, your body needs a little bit of time to wake up the elements and connect with the elements. So, I wrote things I'm grateful for and sat down there and I start to, you know, just kind of let them come to me. So, first one, and I'm not going to read all of them because some of them I'd like to keep uh, for myself. Uh, I'll read some. So, for, you know, one thing that I wrote, having stellar health and being guided into fasting. So, currently I'm doing, you know, uh, intermittent dry fasting which is incredible you know a consumption window of four hours at the most two to four hours sometimes i go six depending uh incredible it's today is day four and i think i averaged like 21 or 22 hours in those four days and uh each day feels like i did a two-day water fast so it almost feels like in those four days i've done for two water fasts i feel incredible incredible like it's un unbelievable and so i think i you know having so things i'm grateful for having stellar health and being guided into fasting because i feel like i have been guided all along for it you see having ears capable of hearing beautiful sounds such as music birds crickets etc and uh so that's one thing uh all right, this one here. All right, here we go. <laughs> Being blessed with an extraordinarily, extraordinarily handsome face topped by gorgeous, cute, uh, curly hair. Because uh, everybody just keeps saying that, you know. So I know this to be true, but it, it's true. You know, I, I got an extraordinarily handsome face and really nice hair. So I'm grateful for that. I didn't, it's not like I'm not taking credit for it, but I'm, I, I, I got to be grateful for it. So here we go, <laughs> okay? Uh, the ability and capacity to laugh and appreciate humor because, you know, I, I, uh, I, 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 I'm quite jolly and uh, e I easily laugh and I'm grateful that this is where I am in life, that I could laugh things off. Like, I'm really grateful for that. You know, I'm really grateful that I could just laugh things off. That I could sit down and if I something watch something funny, I actually laugh, laugh like deep belly laughter. So I'm grateful for 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 the constant presence of laughter in my life. This one, this one is uh, it's one of those inception moments. The profound realization that happiness equals gratitude. In other words, I am grateful for being grateful. See, it's an inception thing, but I am grateful that I have been guided to know that this is the secret to happiness. So I'm grateful that my path has led me to this realization, you see? Uh, and that's inception on its own, but this is powerful. When I think about this, very, very powerful. Uh, so the ability and capacity to cry tears of gratitude, which I have done plenty of today, in this morning, plenty of. As I was saying these things, I started to cry. And one of them really... Uh, instigated some some deep emotions music that is accessible with a touch 
beautiful music anytime, anywhere to enhance the experience of life. I love music. I'm so grateful for music. And I really did enjoy listening to music this morning. And that's sort of what got me to start crying because I appreciated the, the, the hearing that I have ears to hear and I appreciated the music. So when I put on the music, I start to cry because the music is so beautiful because I'm so grateful for the ears to hear it. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hi. How are you? Hi. Nice <laughs> yeah, you. Good. The camera is this way. Yeah, so yes, I know. Yeah. So That's it's, why I turned yeah, this yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's so nice. Oh my God. Are you, Lovely, yes. Oh, breathtaking. Yes, yes. <laughs> no pollution, no noise. No? <laughs> Except for my noise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, but yeah, because I'm so. I'm so grateful for having ears to hear in music. That when I put on the music, I just, I'm like, this is so beautiful. I put on like Sufi music, I start to cry, 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 cry. Just cry tears of gratitude. Uh, and I, 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 the fact that I wrote that there, when the tears started to come up, I sort of tell myself, I'm so grateful for these tears. Uh, having a cool ass job to fund my fantasy dream life, which is the teaching kids online. <laughs> which I just find hilarious because it's kind of like a joke like it's very easy very fun twice a week uh, here this is for you guys being a charismatic and for me being a charismatic public speaker and having an audience of 6,000 more 6,000 plus people willingly tune in to hear me speak I mean that's pretty fantastic like even G Jesus didn't have you know what did he have like maybe you know, he lived he, in those days, maybe, you know what? He had an audience of maybe 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 at the most, at the most, right? You know, so that's a lot of people that hit the subscribe button. And 30 plus of those people voluntarily support me financially because they genuinely enjoy my videos. I mean, wow. Wow. I mean, talk, I mean wow. Just voluntarily, hey, you know, go on Patreon, go on PayPal make the donations and everything. I mean, that's uh, that's something. That's something. That's something to uh, keep in mind every day. Uh, and, oh, this one got me. This one got me to really cry. Really, really got, just got me. Lost my, lost my shit there. For having a wonderful, loving mother that raised me with love and care and still unconditionally loves me no matter what. And I actually said good morning to my mom today and I sent her a song, which is something I almost never do, right? But... Because I'm now counting my blessings, because I realized that I could be in the kingdom of heaven if I put the effort, if I look at gratitude as a practice, if I look at contentment as a practice, as something you actually consciously put in the conscious effort into it. I actually sent my mom. Uh, I, first of all, cried. I thought of her, all the suffering she's been through when she was a kid and all the uh, suffering she's been through later on in her life and all the things she's, she's done to raise five kids so beautifully raised them too with so much love and still she she cares she she asks about us she, you know like it's beautiful uh for having a kick-ass brother that seems inseparable from me because my brother is in thailand now and it's like what are you doing here dude you know it's not like he just come like we just always run into into each other it's it's really uh it's really something uh, so uh for living in an utterly beautiful place and I've been spending all this morning and afternoon after doing this gratitude thing, just uh, appreciating everything around me because I wrote it down here. I'm putting the conscious effort to appreciate. Uh, yeah, so those are some of the things. And I'm just like, you know what? I stopped. It was about 17. I didn't read all of them. Um, and I stopped at 17 because uh, the gratitude was so overwhelming me, so much so. Uh, and the tears were coming down and uh, the music was kicking in the Sufi music and then later on some you know dancing and stuff uh, I couldn't go on any longer writing more stuff because I could go on writing a thousand things because I was like so much of it that I, I just I'm like this is enough you know tomorrow tomorrow morning I'll uh, think of other things which there is plenty I mean oh my god once you open the it's like a, a fl floodgate once you start to realize how much you have it's like like oh, like, oh, oh, like, I, you know, you know, today I, I, I'm grateful for, for hearing, 
Perhaps tomorrow morning I will be grateful for sight. I will focus on just having eyes to see. And the day after I may be focused on having a nose to smell things. And the day after maybe taste. And water, I mean, whoa, water, you know, so many things. Oh my God. Be, being able to walk, being able to talk. I mean, wow, we can go on forever, people. We can go on forever here. Forever and ever and ever and ever we can go on. You just have to open the floodgates to this. Happiness equals gratitude. That's life simplified in two words. That's life simplified in two words, in two words. The kingdom of heaven is right here, right now, always available at all times, at all times. Had you eyes to see it, had you ears to hear it, because if you have the ears to hear it, if you have the eyes to see it, and you begin to consciously put in the effort, look at this as, call it a gratitude meditation, look at it, say, I'm putting an hour aside in the morning to consciously, with effort, with deliberate effort, practice gratitude. And in fact, I told myself this, that if the gratitude doesn't make you cry like a baby every morning, then you haven't gone deep enough. Sit down and contemplate your blessings and count your blessings more. Think about them more. Appreciate them more until the tears begin to, te to go down your face. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, my new morning routine. If there are no tears of gratitude in the morning, then I will keep sitting there until I went deep enough into the appreciation of everything that I have, of everything that is, of everything that happened to me, of every experience, that once the tears begin to flood down and they really are deep, then I could go on about my day. Because if I go on about my day today without the gratitude in the morning, without those tears of joy, of love, of, of appreciation, I would not be enjoying this here. I would, I would have come to this, to the Pi Canyon here, and it wouldn't have been as magnificent because my, I would maybe th be thinking about something else instead of being here grateful for what is. Because I practiced it in the morning. I put in the deliberate effort. So now my mind is wired in a way to thank things. Now, I'm going to do this in the evening too. I'm going to do this twice a day. I'm going to do it in the morning and I'm going to do it in the evening. I am rewiring my brain, my mind, to stop chasing and, 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 and uh, looking for things outside of what is here, which is perfection, which is total, utter perfection at every moment, at every level. And I can tell you this. I look back at my life. The best four months of my life were September 2017 until December 2018, or er, December 2017. September, October, November, December. Exactly two years ago, actually. Two years ago, yeah. From September to December, two years ago, 2017. Why? Because that's when I started microdosing, and the microdosing uh, brought to my attention the importance of gratitude, and I would do this every morning because I would microdose and do this every morning. But I didn't put in the conscious effort because it was just happening due to the influence of the substance, causing me to be so grateful. Now it's different. Now I, I am putting in the conscious effort. But th that's why those four months were the happiest months of my life. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have uh, uh, I, I didn't have money. I borrowed money those times, right? I was uh, financially uh, stri stricken in those times. Uh, and I lived somewhere nice in nature. However, uh, November came and it was cold as fuck. Okay, this is Canada we're talking about. November, December. Yet, those four months were the happiest months in my life. Because I was grateful. Every single day I was grateful. Not because I had anything, because I was grateful every single day. And then I start to lose the gratitude because, you know, you start, you don't, you're not conscious of what's happening and you start, you know, I wasn't conscious of what's happening. I, I guess I continued to do, to microdose. However, I presume that I, uh, I, maybe there was some tolerance buildup. I, I started to, I don't know, I don't know. I lost the gratitude and I began to, my mind began to wander again and, and misery began to uh, be bestowed upon me. When I say misery, it's, you know, a lower form of misery, a lower form of suffering, right? Uh, it's not like I'm sitting in bed and just got paralyzed or something like that. Uh, it's a lower form of suffering, but it's the chasing, the craving, the longing. Oh, maybe I should have a girlfriend, maybe this and that. But those four months of just, I was purely grateful every day, just Sufi music and crying and just grateful for the smallest, smallest things in my life. 
happiest four months. The second best phase of my life, December 2015 or January 2015, middle of winter again. No sun, no outdoors, but January 2015 until about May 2015. Hmm. You want to know what happened at th th that time? I got a surgery here, which you can see the scar of here, a wrist surgery. So I was immobilized in that way. I got it in March, but I was so grateful those four months. So grateful for everything. So grateful. Everything was a bliss. Uh, because I, and then I got the surgery, I was like, I'm so grateful I can walk. I'm so grateful I can use my left hand. Just the small things. I, those, that's the second best phase of my life because of the gratitude, not because I had anything. In fact, again, I had the surgery. And I was seeing a, a girl and then, and then we broke up. But I was grateful for the experience with her. And so that it, it didn't nudge. I was so grateful, so full of gratitude. I'm like, wow, what a beautiful experience. You know, and I, I was, it was okay. I was, I was grateful. And I got the surgery. I was like, okay, I, I can walk. I could use my left hand. Uh, you know, what's going on, guys? Hello. I could, I could do all these things. And, uh, and that was the second most blissful period in my life. Why? What's the secret here? What's, what's the magic wand? What's the, what's the magic? What's the, uh, what's the, what's the magic word here? Is it uh, abracadabra? Well, you could think of abracadabra as gratitude. That's it. That's happiness equals gratitude. Heaven equals gratitude. And so I now, you know, living in a place like this, now realizing this, I mean, I would say now this, you know, with this new practice, this upcoming phase is going to be the most blissful phase in my life because I have... Now I'm fully convinced. They say third time is a charm, right? This is the third time which I'm going to go deep into, into the practice of gratitude because both of those times, those blissful phases in my life, I was putting in the conscious effort every single day consciously to be grateful. I had these gratitude rituals going on in those times, causing those times in my memory to be the most blissful. Although I, you know, I, didn't have any, I had a surgery there. I, didn't have, I was borrowing money in one, one point, in one phase. Uh, I broke up with a girl in one phase. I didn't have a girlfriend in another one. But it didn't matter. Nothing mattered at those points. I, nothing that did, nothing mattered. It was just, I was always happy. Always happy, always here, always in the moment. Because gratitude brings you in the moment. I didn't have to meditate today. I didn't have to hum or anything. Because I was so grateful in the morning. I was crying, crying. You know, that's how you know your gratitude is deep. If you're not crying, your gratitude is probably not deep enough. Those tears are very, very precious. Probably not deep enough if you're not crying tears of joy, of gratitude. Because the, 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 energy, the gratitude energy is so powerful. It'll enter you and it will force tears out of you. It will, and, you know, I, I had to get up after. I had to, you know, move the energy like this. Like this. Because there's so much of it. And then I watched some funny stuff after. I watched uh, Anchorman, like clips and Borat. And I was laughing, deep belly laughter. And I was grateful because I wrote it as one of the things. I'm grateful for the experience of laughter. And boom. This is the secret to life. I highly suggest you put this video on your watch later list. Perhaps download it or something. And whenever you feel down or depressed or an icky, just icky, not, not necessarily just icky, like icky, like maybe you say, I don't know, there's a girl in your life and uh, you know, you're not understanding her or something and you're like, oh, what's going on? Or why is she not replying back? Or blah, blah, blah. Just come back and watch this. And, and, and start to practice this. That's the, you, know, you won't need to watch this ever again if, you, if you're like, okay, I'm going to do what Saeed said. I'm going to get a, I'm get a notebook, a pen. Tomorrow morning and every single morning, every single morning, every single morning, I'm going to set aside an hour, call it gratitude hour, and I'm just going to stick with this discipline. I'm going to stick with this practice, and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to make sure that every time I do it, I'm doing it to the point where I am crying tears of, of gratitude. And your life will transform drastically. You will know the kingdom of heaven that I'm talking about, folks. State of flow, state of happiness, state of appreciation. Everybody that I'm meeting today, I mean, you've already seen in the video uh, that beautiful lady, those two people, everybody. I'm just smiling at everybody. I'm waving at everybody. It's all cool. And I'm not looking. I'm not. It's not like... I. I don't care. Like it's like I don't. I don't care. I don't care if there's people. If there isn't people, I don't care if you wave back or you don't wave back. I just don't care, because why? Because I'm already fulfilled. It's beautiful, and it's a paradox. Because in that state 
of fulfillment. You're so extroverted, but you don't even care about the extroversion. You don't care if you have somebody or you don't have somebody. But it's not a I don't care type of arrogance. It's just a, 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 an indifference because you understand that nothing outside will make you happy, that the only thing that is truly going to make you happy is appreciation and gratitude. Appreciation and gratitude include, by default, love, joy, uh, acceptance, all these higher things, compassion, beauty, all of it, the whole thing. The whole package comes with gratitude. It's beautiful, 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 beautiful. And this is it. This is, this, is, this is the abracadabra. This is the open sesame. There's nothing else, folks. If you fully grasp this concept and you fully integrate it into your life over a period of months and years, you have arrived. You have figured out life. That's it. You've arrived. You're now inside the kingdom of heaven. I'm not saying it's going to happen the first time you do it. I'm not saying you're going to feel this kingdom of having the first time you do this. I'm saying gratitude becomes the way of life and then you're now permanently as a, abiding in the kingdom of heaven. You see? So that's why I'm starting with two times a day. Because you lose this, you know. You lose this. Very easy to lose it. Very, very easy. I mean, I, lo I talked about the two previous most blissful phases in my life. I lost it. Completely lost it after actually. Both times, I completely lost it. Became unsatisfied and started to chase and this and that. I lost it. But third time is a charm. Because this time I'm so convinced that of the statement, happiness equals gratitude. So convinced this time. So unbelievably convinced. That it's like, all right, there's nothing else to do but appreciate. Okay? So I, would, I want to appreciate you guys. I wrote it there. Every single one of you guys, watchers, subscribers, listeners, people who decide to contribute via Patreon and via PayPal. Amazing. Incredible. Incredible stuff. Thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm making sure to every day thank you in my heart because these things I will be writing and reading every single day, twice a day. Uh, and uh, there was one more thing I wanted to say. One thing I wanted to say, which was... Oh, yeah, here's the other thing I'm going to do. Because I, that's it. I'm just going to take gratitude as my yoga, as my way of union with God. Every time I make a YouTube video, so I made one today, right now, uh, either shortly after or a little bit later, maybe now I want to walk a little bit out in this area. Uh, maybe when I go back home. But every single day, so as long as I make a YouTube video, there is another counterpart that has to be made, which is me talking about picking one thing and uh, talking to myself, being grateful. And I created a channel, my own private channel, okay? And it's just me having access to it. And I'm going to post those videos there, okay? Every single day, I'm going to make one video. This is for me. And I'm going to make it. I pick one thing. I don't know what it is I'm going to pick today. I'm going to see how the feel the force, feel what I feel so most grateful for today and focus on that and make a video on it and then post all these videos to my private channel and start to just watch those videos. You know, like every time, you know, just put them there, like mental brainwashing almost, rewiring to calm the mind, to bring it back here to count the blessings. In a way, this is spiritual warfare. So, uh, thank you guys so much. I love you. And until next time, may the force be with you.